another she video. Yay! So I'm at 8,500 miles and it's time for my next sheave service. And I'm gonna try and cover mostly stuff I haven't gone into detail before. So it's time to replace my belt. 36.5 millimeters is the minimum. And I'm at 36.2, 36.3. Now, there's been some controversy about measuring the belt. They want you to take two straight edges, put them at an angle, and then have another straight edge at the top. And you guys don't have to do that. I mean, if you have four hands, go ahead and try and hold two straight edges at the proper angle while holding a third while measuring with your caliper. And if you can do it, you show me the video. For us mere mortals, measure along it's getting close here. Measure at the top of the rib. Okay. And I'm at 36.2 so 36.3. Now if you if you want to go across a few ribs to get an average, you can do that. I get a slightly higher reading. Because the thing is when you're compressing this caliper, it's squeezing the rubber. So you know, if you're going to do one rib, just make sure you're gentle moving this dial so you're not putting undue pressure on that rib and you're getting an accurate reading. So I'm at 36.3, which is 0.2 millimeters below the minimum. I have a brand new belt here and it's 37 millimeters. All right, so Yamaha 10-year belt warranty. We did we disclaimers. A lot of guys are, you know, when somebody says they blow their belt, a lot of uneducated guys will chime up with, oh, they had a 10-year belt warranty. Well, read the exclusions. It's pretty fair. It mostly covers belt failure. It doesn't cover belt wear. The warranty is pretty much covering a catastrophic failure from non-abuse. And in that exclusions, if you're playing U-Boat Commander, that's not covered. It explicitly states if you get mud or water in the CVT, your 10-year belt warranty is void. If you want to play in the you know, water, get a jet ski. So I digress. You know, this belt, other than the minimum wear width, it's still in really good condition, other than it's got some cracking on the inside between the ribs and they're not that bad. They're minor, I mean, this belt's really worn well. No chunks out of it, anything like that. But I have a new one um, just because this is below minimum wear and I'll put that on. Just to add to you know, the belt wear and uh, life, I believe cooling is a big, factor in getting long life out of these belts. If you are in the desert and all you do is rock crawl three to five miles an hour, your belt's probably not going to last as long as my 8,500 miles. I do a mix of uh, slow rock crawling, decent trail riding, and then I also drive my side-by-side -side from the trailhead home. So I get decent amount of cooling. I get, um, you know, trail riding speeds, 15 to 20 miles per hour to get to a rock crawling area where I'm only doing that for five or 10 minutes. Your normal user who gets some decent, varied trail riding in, your, your belt's probably going to last longer because the higher in speed you go, the more cooling you're going to get. Now, if you're doing 70 miles per hour wide open for hours, that's not good either. I'm talking talking between 15 to 45 miles an hour. You're going to get good cooling on the belt. If you're greaseless, you're going to blow out all that debris that would otherwise accumulate in the primary. So I attribute my riding style and conditions to my belt longevity.